want to share something with you folks. Just a little gift from the heavens here this morning. Uh, Lori came across a really, really big moth, and when she told me, I thought it was a polyphemus moth like I saw when I was a kid, and I haven't seen one of those in years. So I go, oh, take me to it. I wanted to see it. But it's not. Um, this is a different moth. And they are very rarely seen. Well, let me show it to you here. And uh, it's just just ph phenomenal thing. What a, what a beautiful little gift this morning. Look at the size of that moth right there. It looks like it got buggered up a little bit. But beautiful, isn't it? I believe that's um, the Cecropia moth, if I'm pronouncing it right. At first I thought it was a polyphemus moth, which are similar. And I used to see them when I was a kid. But these little specks here are different. A polyphemus moth, they're round and they look like eyes. Um, these are more like half moons, but look at the size of that thing. Let me get it centered in my hand more. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm going to tuck it in the ferns here and let it do its thing. You know, he's probably on his way out. They don't live more than a week or two as adults. Yeah. And in fact, they don't have mouth parts, so they can't eat. So they have a very short lifespan once they become adults. But to be able to just see one while it is here is just a gift. Yeah, they're not seen very, very often. Yeah. So we'll put him here in the ferns and let him... Finish his life. Yep. There you go, fella. Yeah, he could put you a right visit. there. Oh, oh he's look, coming. He's coming to life. Yeah. Oh. Oh. He doesn't want to leave you, Mom. Mm -hmm. oh, he doesn't want to leave. Hmm. I wish you could live a little longer. You're beautiful. And tuck them off in the bushes so nothing bothers them. You can finish out his time. Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Everything is good here. Um, happy and healthy and rolling forward the best that we can with all of the crappy weather we have had. And we got more on the way. But today is nice and I wanted to come down here and peck away at some of the garden here. Picked the first two cucumbers yesterday in the greenhouse. But out here, with all the rain and the lack of bees, we're not getting pollination. And the only thing that's doing really good is the corn. As you can see, some of it is up to about here on me. So, anyway, I know my videos have been really spotty because we've been really, really busy doing all of the things that I said that we were going to do. And if we're not doing those yet, it's because we are preparing to do them. Like the traveling thing. A couple months ago, I said that we are planning on getting away for part of the winter to go to Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, that area where those three states meet. And we're still planning on doing that. Our intention is to stay in New Hampshire through Christmas, maybe the month of January or part of January, and then head south um, and just play around out there, okay? It's, uh, we've never been there, so I posted that video when I did, and I asked my subscribers that if anyone is familiar with that area, uh, please share your thoughts, places to go, you know, places we must see, that sort of thing. And we've gotten a lot of great feedback, and I want to thank you all for that. We've gotten a lot of offers, people offering us places to stay. There's a lot of people we want to rendezvous with when we travel. We just haven't spoken about that because that is all um, on the back burner now. We got the information we wanted and we will reconnect with those folks as the time gets a little bit closer. 
The only thing that has changed in our plan, for quite some time I told you I was selling the New York cabin. We decided to keep that. We're going to return there. And we're going to sell this place. Uh, this nice off-grid homestead here with the greenhouse and gardens and everything. Hopefully, um, within the next month or so, have this on the market. Everything else is rolling forward the best that we can with the crappy weather we're getting. Um, but primarily, we said that we were going to have more fun, and we have, and we have been to the cabin more times in the last five weeks than we have in the last five years. Man, I know everyone loves that place, but not more than we do. The cabin road isn't much more than a goat path. Oh, it's drivable, but tight passage for a trailer. And we've been hauling trailer loads of stuff here from the homestead. We'll set up the rain barrels with a gutter and filtering system here in the near future. At the camp in New Hampshire, you saw where I took a water tank out of an old Shasta camper. Um, the tank was meant to be horizontal. It was underneath the bench seats. And I put it vertically, cut the end off, and then I plumbed it to the sink downstairs. And you've seen many, many times where I carry the buckets upstairs and then I dump it in and we have gravity feed down to the sink. And that's worked out so good. Doesn't require any power or nothing. So I got this 30 gallon one here and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put it up in the attic, um, up above the, where the kitchen queen's going to go. And then we'll have 30 gallons of water gravity feeding downstairs. Um, this cabin doesn't have a regular stairway going up. It's got fold down stairs and I'm not going to carry buckets up that rickety staircase, you know. So I'll set it up with a pipe and a, and a, a pump and I'll have another tank like this where I can have it in the back of the Ranger go up to the front where the red shed is where we're going to have a well drilled fill it up and then just come here and then transfer it upstairs and that should work out pretty darn good i already bought the solar panels for the cabin so we're setting the place up with a few necessities Bear fridge. <laughs> you think so, huh? Yeah. In the future, the cabin will be our home base, a place to call home between our travels. And a good stock of propane is a must have for living out here. This is the first bottle, and there's three more on the way. Now I got to get the rain barrel off the ground so that I can fit a five gallon pail beneath it. This ought to do. Last but not least is the shepherd's hooks. Mama wants her shepherd's hooks. <laughs> now we got to bring up some more bird feeders. <laughs> we can do that. There hasn't been a feeder here in six years, but it didn't take the birds long to find it. <laughs> Still, they wants a steak too. Steak. What's for supper? That's right. Or dinner. <laughs> Cabin, been 
working cleaning up brush and doing all kinds of stuff today. Having a little cocktail and rotisserying some Cornish game hens. It's my off-grid rotisserie. <laughs> and they're gonna be delicious, let me tell you what. So as you can see folks, we have been having some fun and getting things done. The cabin will be set up better than ever. Yeah. So we go up and we bring stuff and we get it organized and then we enjoy ourselves and making progress there and making progress here and having fun in between and it's been a good summer so far. Um, in my last video here on YouTube, I shared a tiny bit of my cabin journal with you. And I wanted to share just this spot here that I wrote on August 3rd, 2015. And I want to do this because a lot of people say they have a hard time following us because we change our mind a lot. But the only thing that we have changed our mind on is about selling the cabin. I never wanted to sell it. It just seemed like the best idea, but I dragged my feet and I'm glad because we decided to keep that. But like as far as coming here, it wasn't to come back to New Hampshire to live here for the rest of my life. I had the childhood dream that I wanted to fulfill and that was to fix up the old camp and live here. And our plan was to live here a year and we lived here for six years. It's working on its seventh year now. And uh, we want to go and do other things. But it, we never changed our mind about anything. And I'm going to prove this to you right here. Okay. This was August 3rd, 2015. I came in yesterday and spent the night. This is the cabin in New York. I was planning on staying tonight but I have a doctor's appointment in the morning. I'll get that out of the way and then return. This morning, I got all the blocks laid out and leveled for my little workshop out here. It'll be small, but enough to tinker on things and work on furs. I plan to install the solar panels to the backside of the roof and run an underground cable to the cabin. I should be powered up nicely once that project is done. I'm also starting the site work up near the entrance for a 14 by 24 building for the business. Eventually, I will have a well put in up there and write the whole deal off under the food business. It's a busy summer, but I think it'll all be worth the effort. I'm heading home shortly, but we'll be back for another night or two. All right, so I talked about solar panels and running an underground conduit to the cabin and having a well put in. Well, look at this, folks. So right here, we got three 200 watt panels that I'm gonna mount on the back side of the workshop. This is the charge controller and all that stuff. This is the conduit to run the power underground from the workshop to the cabin and some components I need here for the conduit. This isn't a new idea, folks. We're just picking up where we left off. Now, to give you a better understanding of how we operate, right? We have a, a lot of things that we like to do. We have more than one place that we can live in. We have a cabin and a camp and a camper and another place. And we're gonna go do some traveling and who knows where we're gonna land after that, right? So this is how we think and it's much like a border collie, okay? We let Tildy out the door and she first, she runs out and goes and gets one of the toys in the yard. She'll grab her green ball and run to us. We'll throw the green ball. She'll bring it back, we'll throw it again. And on the way back, she drops the green ball and gets the red ball and brings the red ball. And we throw the red ball and she goes and gets that because that's just as much fun as the green one. Now she's coming back with that 
and we throw the frisbee and she goes to get the frisbee. She's bringing back the frisbee and then a squirrel goes running across the yard. Well, the frisbee is as much fun as the red ball and the green ball, but there's a squirrel right now and that's more fun than any toy. And if she doesn't chase that squirrel right now, she may miss her opportunity and not get another one. So she goes and chases the squirrel while she can. That's what we're doing, and that's how we operate. That's just good border collie logic. Frankie and the boss out of walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss